Welcome back to the Purple Rain Podcast, guys. It is, as always, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm just butchering these intros, but Michael Pevia, as always, joining you guys, my host, Adriana Arojo. Adriana, how are you doing? Pretty good. No complaints. I think every time we've done one of these, I, like, haven't had school, and so it just seems like I'm never at school, but I don't have school right now, so feeling feeling pretty good pretty relaxed a little bit nervous about these upcoming games but we'll get into that how are you doing I'm doing good I'm doing good I think people are also wondering like doesn't she say she's like in, in school like she's never at the library in class or anything yeah. she's always just in her dorm or at home or something like that like hey I don't know guys that that's the life of a college student so I don't know I, I don't know but hey it's crazy in sports right now. You know, our Dallas Mavericks are taking off. Things are going off in the NFL, but we got to talk about TCU. Okay. Football update for you guys. Nothing too much going on except for a huge loss. It's not a loss that I will speak out about. Like I spoke about, about Shadera going to Georgia. Rashad samples has left TCU after making a quick cup of coffee on the job and going to the Los Angeles Rams. He is going to be the new running backs coach, and it's something that I didn't necessarily um, see coming. I was notified of it. What was it, like a week and a half ago or so? I believe he was on – Rashad was on vacation. Uh, so I, I, I don't know where, but he was with a couple of the staff members, and he got a call from his agent. You know, L.A.'s calling, you know, inquiring about your availabilities for the running back coach. They were trying to figure out if they wanted to do it on Zoom or in person, go down to L.A., or L.A. comes down to Fort Worth and does it. I don't know how it happened, but the interview happened. He blew them away. Sean McVay, who is a young coach himself, gets a very, very raw coach as his new running backs coach. He's going to be in the room with Cam Akers, with Daryl Henderson, Sonny Michelle, and those boys. Ariana, how how big of a loss is, is Rashad Samples to TCU? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. I One of the things that we talked about early on is the biggest thing with Sonny Dykes coming is his staff, and especially with Rashad Samples, is his ability to recruit players. And, you know, that's huge. He resonates really well with a lot of the young guys and knows what, you know, they need to hear and what, you know, they are, like, what connects with them. So this is really, really big, but... At the same time, uh, it's so hard because you can't fault him at all. I think he's only 27, I'm pretty sure. Um, So I think I saw a post or something. It was like only, you know, so long ago he was uh, getting his first job and at, I think, UT, I'm pretty sure. But for him, so young to be um, coaching in the NFL, Um, So huge promotion for him and huge opportunity. So really excited to see um, what he can do and super exciting and really deserving guy, but uh, was really hoping that he could stay in Fort Worth and uh, build something great at TCU, but definitely going to be rooting for him because this is an awesome opportunity that you definitely can't pass up. But yeah, huge loss, especially in the uh, recruiting realm. Yeah, recruiting is definitely going to take a, a major hit. And there were some guys that that came here who had ties with Rashad Samples. So where do those players lie with TCU right now? I have no idea. Uh, probably not going to get into the names of them yet. Uh, probably wait till spring ball goes on. And then if those, you know, l- let them play out, basically is what I'll say. But when it came to Rashad, he wanted to start, you know, doing interviews. You know, this isn't something that we thought he would take at least that's what the notion inside the building was he, he wouldn't take it. he just wanted to get out there you know he has this th- this rap about him that oh he's just a recruiter he's just a great recruiter he's just here for recruiting services and that that's it no he wants to be known as a great coach a great developer a great leader and that's what really drove him to take this job also from what i hear la offered up big money because rashad has a big job at TCU running backs coach recruiting coordinator, big time. One of the better recruits in the, in in the country and LA ponied up the checkbook, got Rashad to the NFL, man. I, I NFL jobs are hard to come by. They're hard to get. 
And him getting this so early is just a testament of how good a coach he is, man. I can't fault it. You're going to the NFL. You're going to the Super Bowl champions, okay? We we, we know how this works, Adriana. When you're on a staff that's won Super Bowls, your staff is going to get plucked for higher higher jobs, offensive coordinators, head coaches. He He's fast-tracking to that now. So best of luck to Rashad. Uh, we still have great cr- cr- uh, recruiters here, Brian Carrington, Paul Gonzalez, Malcolm Kelly. We still got great guys here that are going to be – doing a great job uh, for the TCU Horned Frogs on the recruiting trail. So TCU suffers a big loss, but that's in the football department. TCU basketball has been the one giving out big losses. Am I right, Adriana? So I I got to put you on the forefront here. You know, back-to-back top 10 wins, back-to-back court stormings, by the way, from from what I see on the uh, Arojo Twitter feed. And I really – I just got to give the floor to you. Let's talk Texas Tech. Real quick, okay, because that was the big game. You know, it was it was going to be the second to last home game of the season before you went on the road and finished out uh, whatever. But with Texas Tech, it was going to be a get, big game. You went to Lubbock earlier in the year and really got manhandled in that game, lost by nearly 20. But at home, what changed? Yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things was this team – obviously like came out and you could tell that they really, really wanted this game. Like they, you could tell that they prepared differently for this game. And um, I think when a team plays with like kind of an intensity and when they're matching the opponent, like point for point, and you can just tell that they want it so bad, you know, that, that plays into a game really, really, um, really like a lot. And I think that that was probably one of the biggest things is they just had a lot of heart. You know, Mike Miles had probably one of his biggest games that he's had in a while, especially since um, hurting his wrist. I think he had like 26 points. Um, And one of the biggest things that, you know, we finally got cleaned up a lot was turnovers. We only had 13 turnovers, which was huge. Um, And one thing to give credit to tech is, which I already knew this, but, wow uh they travel really really well um me and one of my friends were joking before the game we're like I think we're gonna break our attendance record and it's not gonna be because of how many TCU fans are there it's gonna be because of how many tech fans are there and sure enough um they had to cap like the student um like the student uh like attendance and there was so much red at the stadium and they were everywhere. Uh, they get really, really loud. So props to their fans. They travel so well, get really, really loud. Um, it kind of sounded like a tech home game. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I had some people watching at home and they texted me and were like, this is a TCU home game. Like, are y'all screaming? We're like, no, we're trying. They're just everywhere. They're just outnumber us so much. Um, but yeah, TCU just limiting turnovers, um, uh, Mike Miles scoring, like having one of his best games. And then I think every getting everyone involved so much more, Emmanuel Miller, Damian Ball, um, they were able to contribute much more. I think um one of the things was like Eddie Lampkin, he only had um seven points, I believe, but one of the biggest things is just like his ability to get in the paint and be like a defensive presence. Um, he's done a really good job this season of that. And you could tell that he was going to be disruptive in that area. And it definitely worked. Um, we were able to like limit points in the paint a lot because of him. So I don't know. I just think everything about this game, like you could tell so much more that we really, really wanted it. And that was something really good to see from this team. Cause I think, you know, a few possessions throughout this season have been kind of frustrating. And one of the things we've talked about in the past a lot is turnovers. It's really frustrating. Um, but this is one of the first games that I've seen where we really were focusing on every possession. Um, so great effort. I don't know. It was, it was awesome. And that leads me to the next game, Kansas. This was another game where 
This team is almost high on, off emotion. You almost think that there's going to be like a, a, a big win hangover, a, as you will. And there's not too many days separating these games. Re- remember that we're, we're in the latter half of the season and games are starting to happen more frequently now, not just once or twice a week. Uh, I think the, the, the Horn Frogs had what, three games in the last week or so or four in the last maybe what, 10, 11 days. So yeah, I think four in the last eight days, I believe. Oh my gosh. Like that is that that's a schedule right there. Um, in Kansas or for the game in Fort Worth against Kansas, this was a game where TCU immediately came out and you saw the energy. Once again, you saw the offensive boards. Kansas is not as dominant as you would think that they were. These aren't the Andrew Wiggin days, the Devontae Graham days, the the Josh Jackson day. It's not those days. It's not that. They're still a good team. But TCU's defense in in the last two weeks has has gone up so much. Like you, you, you almost don't recognize this team playing that type of defense against those teams. The shot making. I mean, the shot making. Don't even get me started on that. Damian Ball, Emmanuel Miller, Chuck O'Bannon. I mean, we, we got guys hitting shots. I'm just like, where's this been all year? Where was that against the last Texas game? Where was that against the Baylor game when they were missing, like, two important players and they were letting you stay in the game? Where was that at? This is the time of year where you like to see that happen. So for this Kansas game, uh, free throw making was was definitely a positive in this one. TCU has not been the greatest uh free throw shooting team in the last maybe five minutes of the game but in this game of course you were in in attendance again storming the court uh look i i I gotta get your take on this again mike miles your best player stepping up damian ball when miles goes off the court he's ball handling much more you see the confidence he's getting a little bit of handles you know thinking he's Kyrie out there Kyrie irving trying to get a little bit of handles behind the back through the legs Again, against Kansas, shot-making defense. Talk to us. Yeah, I mean, again, I was really impressed with the tech game, and I was getting worried about this Kansas game as far as um, hype. Uh, I know a lot of people were pretty excited coming off the tech game, storm the court, you know, underdog, all of that stuff. Um, And then for those that don't know, you know, the storm chasers from um, Barstool, came to the game against Kansas as well. So basically they like pick one game that they think like the team is on storm watch, I guess. Um, and they come in like rain jackets and stuff. So they came to our game and they were front row and everything. Um, Jeremiah Donati got them tickets, made sure they were able to like come, uh, rolled out the red carpet for them, which was cool because uh, Arkansas did not allow them to come in. So TC looked really good for that. Um, so that was cool, but I was a little nervous as far as hype. Um, but we looked really, really good, even better. So we cut down from the tech game, six less turnovers. So we only had seven turnovers total. Um, but the biggest stat coming out of this game was 47 rebounds, which I think is insane, especially, um, for this team, I mean, I think in general, like all season, that's been one of our biggest things is we're a really good rebounding team, but that's definitely where we won this game was the 47 rebounds. Um, so that was awesome. But I think, again, I said the tech game was probably where I've seen us play our best basketball all season. This game was even better, which, like I said, I was worried about a drop off and there was none. Um, all five of our starters scored and then uh, four of our bench players that played also scored so we got everyone involved everyone that played scored which was great too because we needed every single one of those points to beat Kansas Um, but I think biggest thing is like down the stretch maintaining composure this is one of those things that we've talked about is you know in that OSU game early on in the season we lost that, I think, 10-point lead um, in the last minute and 30 seconds. It's really disappointing because that game was so winnable and right there. Um, but in a game like this against a team like Kansas, it's very easy to lose that composure and lose the game. Um, but 
TCU never let up and the whole game, you know, seemed in control. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things in growth that I've seen with this team and in this game in particular is that we're able to close out big games like this. So I think all of that combined, um, just really excited to go into the tournament, but all of that was really cool to see um, in this Kansas game for sure. The unsung hero in the Kansas game had to have been Micah Peavy for me. It was it was my his defense, his help defense, his switching, his rebounds. He had seven rebounds. I believe four of them were offensive rebounds and all those offensive rebounds turned into points. That was that that was the, the nail in the coffin for me. I mean, when you are rebounding and TCU is one of the better rebounding teams in the country, probably the best in the Big 12, you, you're always rebounding someone. It's so important, especially at home with, with a top 10 team, a top 16 team in your building. This team did everything right. They won the game 74 to 64 free throws, of course, because it almost got a little chippy at, at, at the end of the game because Kansas started fighting their way back. It was going to be a free throw shooting contest. And, and TCU hasn't had the greatest rep for being a good uh, good free throw shooting contest. I don't know, I don't know about you, Adrian, but sitting in my living room, living room, I got so nervous. I got so nervous. I'm like, dude, you are not going to do this with like, there was like 30 seconds left. You know, they kept fouling and everything. I'm like, no, don't, 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 don't. And then defense, forcing turnovers, getting buckets. It all felt great. Back to back top 10 wins. Against the Texas Tech game, you felt like, okay, this team is going dancing. Now that they beat the number six team, they are a lock in this tournament. You go back and face Kansas. You go to Lawrence. I'm almost kind of complimented because I don't know about you, but did it not feel like the entire time the ESPN broadcast kept talking about how to beat TCU instead of TCU howling beat to beat Kansas. Am I the only one that saw that? No, I think I, I tweeted something about that. He said something like, Oh, um, I forget how to say his name. Kansas's best player. Um, Ojabi. Yes. They're like, Oh, he's going to need help. If he's going to want to beat this TCU team that has all of these, you know, dynamic shooters and stuff. And I was like, did, did I just hear that right? Like, he's going to need help if he wants to beat the TCU team. Like, um, but yeah, the whole time it sounded like they were complimenting the t- TCU a lot, which is really cool to hear. Um, and definitely not something that happens very often, especially a team like Kansas. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. But also like a really weird experience. (laughs) Yeah, that was weird. You know, seeing what this team was able to do at home and then you go on the road to Lawrence, they still performed well. They were still in the game in the last two minutes of it. You still had a chance. And, hey, I can't fault you for going into Lawrence and losing. You still showed that, you know, usually when you see these back-to-back games, one team wins and the next one, the other team wins handily. You didn't see that. Kansas had to fight for for this win. Every second of this game, you, they had to fight for this win. Then the last game of the season, definitely it was a winnable game. TCU goes to Morgantown, faces West Virginia, an inferior opponent, and they dropped the game. Turnovers kind of came back in this game to bite them in, in the behind a little bit, but this is Morgantown. That was still a very loud arena. And this is a Bob Huggins team. Defense, 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 defense. That's all going to be Bob Huggins, okay? This is the the Javon Carter days uh, uh, of West Virginia. I mean, defense hounded TCU the whole time. Now, how many of those defensive quality teams like West Virginia are you going to face in the tournament? I don't know. But right now, TCU is playing the right way at the right time. Now, I'm not, you know, going to get all crazy Final Four crap or anything like that. But if you find a good matchup, if you get into a good bracket, why not? Why can this team not out-rebound those other teams? You know, right now, I think they're projected to be a 8, 9, 10 seed right now. They could face 
Murray State. They can face San Francisco. They can face whoever they they face. And honestly, I'm almost hoping that we almost match up against Gonzaga because, I mean, we were just talking before the show. Gonzaga does not look all that inferior or superior to TCU. They can definitely be had on the boards, and I'll take it. I'll take that matchup. But but not to get into the round of 32 because we haven't even gotten heard our name on Selection Sunday yet. This team is in. Can we agree on that? Yeah, definitely. I, I would say, like, as far as how far we're getting, this last stretch of the season has been – really really encouraging and I think all year we've been kind of griping on the same things and it's like man if they could just knock down some free throws if they could just you know clean up the turnovers and you know get timely shots this or that like we're just like on the verge and we definitely have you know the team chemistry and the coaching and all of these things um so it's cool to see it all come together and, you know, we're getting those big wins that I think the team definitely deserves. So it's cool to see that happen. And I think uh, it's coming at a good time too. So heading into March, very encouraging, pretty excited. Um, yeah. As far as Gonzaga don't look, they don't look as dominant as they did last year. Um, pretty relatively beatable. Do I want to face them? I don't know. Hey, it's March. You can't run away. You can't run away. It's March. Did, did, this hey, is true. Loyola Chicago wasn't sitting there saying, I don't want to face Tennessee. I don't, I don't, I don't want to face these teams. They ended up in the Final Four. Now, I don't know if we're going to the Final Four or not. I have no idea. Uh, are we going to New Orleans? I don't know. It would be nice to see them there, but uh we're, we're gonna stick with the big 12 tournament right now that, that's the tournament we're gonna focus on um uh, also by the way i really don't know how jamie dixon didn't get big 12 coach of the year it did went to the texas tech coach i mean you already had a good team been to the final four previously uh you have five and four stars all on your roster nba prospects and jamie dixon has nothing but transfers and he didn't get it so Picked what ninth to finish in the in the Big Twelve and ended up finishing fifth. Yeah, I think the um, for the Baylor coach a lot of it because they had to deal with like a lot of injuries throughout the Baylor year. Too. Yes, and Baylor. They didn't drop a lot of games during that stretch when they had a lot of injuries. So I think that might have been the big thing. And but yeah, I mean, that. I see your I see your point. But I think that was probably the biggest. Yeah, Scott Scott Drew, man. He's Baylor, right? You know, he, he's been there for a long time. Uh, I, I forget about uh, what was that power forward's name? He he played at Baylor and he was talked. He literally was on the Cowboys as a tight end. He literally went to the NFL. Rico Gathers. There it is. R- Rico Gathers. That that was his name. Those days of, of, of Scott Drew, right? <laughs> I mean, almost forgot about that name. Uh, I, I remember the dude had humongous shoulders. And people thought he could play tight end. So, yeah. So, Big 12 tournament coming up right here. They're going to get started at uh, to where we're recording on Tuesday night. Y'all are going to be listening to this Wednesday, hopefully Thursday. They play Thursday, 5 o'clock, I believe. They're going to be playing Texas. Okay, this is going to be the third time this season that they're going to play Texas. They have dropped the first two games. But honestly, I right think, now. I, I think I'm, it's like 1130. It's at 11.30? A.M., yeah. A.M.? Yeah. Fort Sorry, Worth, I didn't Austin. mean to play. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm glad you, you said it because it kind of changes. Austin boy, college boys, Fort Worth college boy who goes to sleep early, who's out partying later. I'm going to go with the Fort Worth boys, okay? I'm going to go with TCU. Um, I'm going to go with TCU in this game. I think it, it's hard to beat a team three times a year. It is hard to beat them three times in a year. Texas has gotten the leg up, of course, but for Texas, it's it's about their defense. Their offense is lacking so much in games, but because of their swarming defense, it helps them out. They're not hitting shot shots. They're getting into the paint. They're getting layups, dunks, free throws. 
I'm going to take TCU in this game. I think they've, they haven't won the rebounding uh, against Texas. This game, they have to. Because if, if you want to, you know, if you're already in the tournament, what are you playing for? Are you trying to get a higher seed, uh, trying to get the benefit, get the leg up in a matchup you won in the NCAA tournament, whatever the case may be. I'm going to take TCU in, the, in this game, honestly. Uh, it's going to be another Texas TCU game. It's going to be another Big 12 game coming down to the wire in Kansas. Um, Big 12 tournament. Now, one thing I did not know about this, Adriana, when did they decide to remove the last team in the league out of the tournament? Because Iowa State is not going to be competing in, in this tournament. When yeah, I don't know. Happen? I was thinking that too. I don't know if that's it's always been like that or if I just like didn't realize. I don't. That. I, I've been following some college basketball and I remember some college uh, or Big 12 tourney games, you know, the Jacobin Brown days at Texas, the Mike Cabongo, Jonathan Holmes days at Texas, and then you go to the TCU. Mike Cabongo. Right, Mike Cabongo. I haven't uh, heard that name in so long. Right. Um, it, it's I, I don't know. I, I feel like that just got implemented or something, but that's weird. Um, Wait, Adriana, where I are you going? Tech. They are? I think so. There is someone. I saw... I was reading somewhere that the last team is not going to be competing. I don't know. Sorry, guys. We're, I, I'm looking this up right now, but while I am... I'm going to hand the uh, reins to Adriana. Yeah. So she's going to get us into this TCU Texas matchup. Yes. Um, oh, man, this is one that I've been struggling with because I will say the first time that TCU played Texas, I had a pretty good feeling about it as far as um, just because Texas kind of strikes me as like a little bit of a streaky team. Um, and like you mentioned, really good defense, but um, not as dominant um, offense. But then obviously we lost by like 20 points. Um, So I was pretty off on that. But I think with this game, uh, it's still kind of a toss up, but I want to say like, uh, I don't want to jinx it, but I want to say leaning in TCU's favor just because um, uh, this is so hard just because of how TCU has been playing in this last stretch of games, like I said, everything that's been needing to come together for this team has been coming together. And I think with all of that, like that's not going to stop all of a sudden. Um, Yes, they did drop the West Virginia game, but I think that might've been more of like Morgantown is different, a difficult place to play. And, um, I mean, they had been playing so many games in such a short amount of time. So I think with rest, a uh, different location, all of that, um, it'll court. be, a, yeah, a good, like, reset. Um, but I think all of that is, like, different set of circumstances. One of the things that I saw, I think it was Colin Post, um, he mentioned on Twitter is that we've – out rebounded um, in all of our games except for five and two of them were against Texas and again we're such a strong rebounding team like if we're going to want to win this game we have to like we have to rebound and that's a huge part of our game and in the last two Texas games that's basically where we lost the game, I would say. So definitely want to do that. Um, And it's so weird, but Brock Cunningham is such a hustle player for UT. And I feel like they feed off of like so much of his energy. Um, So definitely, I would say like watch him because I think he kind of sneaks up on us every time because we kind of like underestimate him. Um, So definitely a player to watch, but I'm going to go TCU on this one. I I just think we're feeling too good, and Texas is a little bit of a streaky team in general. Um, But, yeah, hopefully if we come out with, like, the same – I think we're going to want it more, too, this time. And like you said, beating a team three times in a row is difficult, so. Right. Yeah, I think for, like, nearly almost – not really almost, but 
what is it like five days to plan? I think Jamie Dixon is going to find a way to get Cunningham a little bit under control. Uh, always physical, diving for loose balls and, and, and everything. You know, like you said, the energy player. And as she was talking, I did look it up. Iowa State is playing Texas Tech in the 3-6 matchup. Oklahoma State is the team that's not going to make the trip to the Big 12 tournament. So I don't know when this started. I don't I have no idea. I just know we're not the ones that are not coming to this tournament because we're good. They're not, even though somehow we dropped that game. Like the last two minutes, we dropped that game. I still have no idea why, but I, I'm, I'm going to take TCU in this matchup. I just, I, I like how we're playing right now. I'm not going to say we're going to win by 15 or 10, but if we, if you win by two or three, you got to win. This is the time of the year where it doesn't matter if it's by 20, 15, or one. You have to win to keep playing. So, why not? Let's see this team in a win or go home situation. So I'm excited to see it. Adrian, are you are you excited to see it? I'm very excited to see it. Thursday, yeah. 1230. Unfortunately, it's going to be going on while I'm working. But of course, that's why we all have iPhones and Hulu and we watch it live. Uh, sorry, the one of these apartments probably isn't going to get done that day in the second half of the day. So sorry, boss, if you're watching this, you know, you, you know what I'm doing. Um, So other than that, guys, we will be back to talk about the NCAA tournament. TCU is going. We don't know where yet, but we will be back to talk about the NCAA tournament, TCU's matchup, other Big 12 matchups, because, you know, when it comes to tourney time, we're going to rep, we're going to, you know, root for the Big 12, of course, and talk about other interesting matchups. So, again, any other closing remarks uh, before we head out, Adriana? No, not right now. I'm just excited. Hopefully TCU, never thought I'd say this, but hopefully TCU can beat UT. So excited to see it. The basketball school. Wow. I mean, if you're going to be a basketball school, you got to seat more than 8,000 freaking people in your arena. I I just got to say that. Um, So I don't know if you got to rent out Dickie's arena for a year while you do renovations, but the basketball school TCU sounds really good to me so guys she is adriana rojo i am michael pevia once again check us out on youtube check us out on twitter at the purple rain underscore pod we'll see you next week talking the tournament see you